Hello dear fans, friends and subscribers. Welcome to your usual cricket happening show with your host Ram. Well, on this particular cricket show, it's going to be the preview of the second one day international of the three match series which is coming up between Zimbabwe and South Africa. It's going to be played at Bloemfontein. And uh, let me tell you, Zimbabweans are the ones who are under pressure with South Africa already one zip in the ODI series. And if at all Zimbabwe don't win this particular second ODI, uh, it would be curtains for them as far as uh, uh, able to win the series. So basically, there's only a three-match ODI series. So I'll do a brief preview of this match, which is going to be played at Bumpfun time, but uh, uh, generally considered a very good batting pitch. So you could uh, expect some uh, real uh, raining of uh, uh, strokes uh, coming from the batsmen. Uh, and other than that, um, we had the tour game today. The first tour game between Pakistan uh, A and Australia ended up in a draw. Uh, I'll be talking about that and then we'll have a look at some general cricket news. But first, let's head off to... Um, la la the first thing that I'm going to do is going to start off with the uh, preview uh, of the uh, second one-day international, which is coming up between South Africa and Zimbabwe. It's going to be played at Blomfontein and I can tell you the Blomfontein uh, of what one has seen, uh, it is, it's a good batting pitch. So let's look at Zimbabwe and see what Zimbabwe has to do and what is what are the what they definitely have to do to go and win the second one-day international, and uh, and also look at what Zimbabwe lacked in the previous uh, one day, which they can offer this time um, in Blomfontein. Now, one thing which is going, as I said, uh, is this pitch is uh, the, the Blomfontein pitch. Uh, is a, a perfectly uh, a batting pitch and that's what normally one considers uh, because uh, normally it is uh, absolutely as flat as uh, a bread one could say so the bat has always dominated the ball there so as far as uh, the Zimbabwean uh, team is concerned now uh, one has to see uh, if you look at the composition there they require a good opening start and that has to be provided uh, by this very, very wonderful opening pair of an experienced uh, Zimbabwean captain, Hamilton Masakadza and Solomon Meyer. And Solomon Meyer is uh, definitely a big hitter of the ball. And he also can per play the percentage strokes as well. So Solomon Meyer and Masakadza would be expected to really, uh, looking at a batting pitch in Blomfontein, they are expected to really, really uh, get a good opening partnership going. Uh, Craig Irvine, uh, he can provide the solidity to proceedings. Craig Irwan, Sean Williams, uh, they are the ones who provide the solidity to proceedings. Brendan Taylor is someone who can adapt himself very well. If you need the strokes, he can stroke the ball. If you need uh, someone to play a waiting game, he can do that as well. So he doubles up uh, really and he's a big asset to the Zimbabwean team, no doubt about it. So the middle order is looking pretty strong there. And then they have Peter Moore, the wicket keeper, uh, coming in. Uh, to play so he's also a very handy bat uh, Elton Chukumbra is there to provide some real fireworks at the end if at all they re really need an injection of runs uh, he's someone on whom uh, this could be really really uh, something one could rely on this uh, Elton Chukumbra and then uh, we come on to the tail end as Wellington Masakadza can be considered uh, a sort of a useful bat because he's uh, basically an all-rounder so Wellington Masakadza Brendan Mauta the red arm leg spinner and then we come on to the very good uh, pace opening pair opening pace pair of Kyle Jarvis and Tendai Chatara and one knows that Kyle Jarvis was a bit uh, off color the other day but Tendai Chatara was absolutely on the money six overs one made and 12 runs and two wickets that's a splendid balling and especially uh, considering that Zimbabwe did not have enough runs to defend uh, one was wondering uh, if Zimbabwe had runs under the belt which I'm expecting them to do it tomorrow Tendai Chatara uh, could someone be a really, really a, a, a baller to watch out for tomorrow? Uh, and but Kyle Jarvis is the one who has to really hit the straps, and uh, definitely uh, it's not going to be easy. It's a batting pitch, so the ballers would be uh, ballers for them. It would be uh, a sort of a minefield for them. So one has to wait and watch as to what really transpires at Blomfontein. Now the other thing, South Africa. Well, they are going into it with confidence. Uh, Dean Elgar fell cheaply, so he would like to get a bit of runs. Aidan Markram did not carry on, so he would also resign. This was uh, a victim of a beautiful delivery from Wellington Masakadza, if I'm not wrong. So he would like to uh, do something there. 
uh, Domini and then Hendrik Klaassen did a good job. Christian Jonker would be expected to score a bit of runs as well. Wyan Mulder uh, and then the all-rounders and Andriel, Andriel Philip Wyo and Wyan Mulder are all-rounders in the mix. And then it comes into the bowling. Uh, Kagi Sorabada, Lungi Giri, who was the, uh, was the man of the match in the previous match. Uh, and they still have not gone for Dale Stream. And Imran Tahir, who will be turning 40 uh, probably uh, two months before the World Cup. That's what I hear. So basically, Imran Tahir is there. So it will be interesting to see uh, as to what South Africa does. But uh, again, one thing is uh, pretty certain. It's a batting pitch. So even if the, uh, the, the side that wins the toss bats first, one is expecting that to happen. Or probably it could be the other way around. Probably inserting the opposition and then um, trying to score the runs. Uh, it, it, I mean, it, either, either one could be possible. Either they could set a big target, put the pressure on the other team or whether it will be interesting to see uh, what uh, both the uh, captains do when they won, win the toss. Uh, so that is as far as the second. And as I said, this is very important for Zimbabwe. It's a three-match ODI series uh, that one is into here. Uh, and uh, it's very imperative for Zimbabwe to go and actually uh, win this match against South Africa. One knows that it's a very, very uh, tough ask. Uh, but um, definitely, uh, if uh, Zimbabwe fail to do that, I'm afraid to say uh, it will be curtains for them uh, in this ODI series. So let's wait and watch as to what happens here. Uh, now, the next thing I'm going to talk about is the tour match, uh, which uh, ended in a draw. Uh, it was the first tour match of the, uh, of the uh, Pakistan-Australia test series, which is coming up in the UAE. Uh, so, uh, the, the, the Aussies actually declared on the overnight score with uh, Mitchell Marsh remaining 162 not out. So, there was a huge lead for them. And Pakistan, A, were really put under the pump a bit, uh, one could say. And it was only uh, thanks to the, uh, some um, saving effort of uh, Mohamed Rizwan, uh, who eked out 24 balls to score 8 runs with one boundary. Uh, and that was the only reason that uh, Pakistan bailed themselves out. Uh, if you look at the uh, batting from Pakistan, they really struggled. And uh, definitely... Uh, looking at the way uh, these UAE wickets are expected to and um, expecting that Pakistan and Australia Test Series will definitely give a lot of chance to the spinners as it did. Uh, as you know, pa Australia have already brought a lot of uh, spinners in the mix and today that one spinner, John Holland, the left arm spinner, uh, did a wonderful turn for himself today uh, as uh, he picked up and Wahab Riaz was the other one who saved the match for them. And John Holland was amongst the wickets. In fact, uh, he took a five wicket bag uh, today, when he got Shan Masood for 41 uh, of 44 deliveries, uh, six fours. Uh, Sami Aslam was a victim of the bowling of Nasser for 12. Abid Ali, who played very well in the first innings, once again impressed uh, by making 52 with three boundaries. Asad Shafiq got a good hit there, 69 with nine boundaries. Iftikhar Ahmed made 45 with three boundaries, which is good to see. Usman Salahuddin was out cheaply for four. Saad Ali was out for five. And then uh, the, they were under pressure to lose the match and it's only thanks to Mohamed Rizwan and Wahab Riyaz who bailed them out uh, from a disaster and uh, bailed them out from losing the uh, match as from 257 for 7 uh, they took their time but they uh, they definitely eked out a draw and as I said John Holland the left arm spinner uh, was the one amongst the wickets 25 over 6 maidens 79 runs and 5 wickets to John Holland so left arm spinner and one wicket apiece to Nathan Lyon and Michel, M M Michael Nasser. Uh, so that's the uh, match situation. So the first uh, match, uh, the first tour match of the of this, uh, which was played at ICC Academy in Dubai, uh, has ended in a draw. Now we have a look at some uh, cricket news. Uh, as far as cricket news is concerned, the one thing that I would like to talk about is um, the first test against India and West Indies. West Indies touring India. Uh, they already played their first tour game and they did uh, very well. And now it's time for the first test match between India and West Indies, which would kick off uh, at Rajkot on October the 4th. And the news for West Indies, unfortunately, uh, is not good. Uh, Kemar Roche, their strike bowler, uh, has to go back uh, to the West Indies uh, due to his uh, death of his grandmother. And uh, that's very sad, but uh, Kemar Roche is gone. And the West Indian coach uh, has said uh, that uh, it is not something uh, which is going to bother them. Uh, because he has said that it, it is giving an opportunity uh, to the youngsters. And uh, the coach has said some new faces would be seen in action. Uh, he has mentioned about uh, Kimo Paul, 
uh, who, according to me, is a very impressive bowler. I've seen him uh, in the Under-19 World Cup as well. Uh, and uh, he's, he's a very good bowler, Kimo Paul. He's pretty, uh, quite nippy, I would say. And he could surprise you with his pace. Uh, and he, he can uh, really bowl stump to stump line as well. So Kim, uh, so Kimo Paul is one bowler, the pace bowler, young pace bowler. Uh, bowls a decent pace. And then they have Sherman Lewis, who really impressed uh, in, the, in the match against... Uh, when they were playing in the board President's eleven in their first tour match. Uh, where he really impressed with a lot of economy and he also picked up uh, I think one wicket I think it was Hanuma Vihari's wicket and he was very impressive Sherman Lewis uh, the youngster and uh, definitely the uh, West Indian coach has hinted uh, as saying that uh, there would be one of those either Kimo Paul or, uh, or Sherman Lewis would be replacing and in all probability uh, I have a feeling that Sherman Lewis has just entered the fray here uh, as far as international cricket is concerned uh, I think the nod would be going to Kema Roche, uh, sorry, uh, going to uh, Kimo Paul, who is a, uh, who is a bit experienced uh, than, uh, uh, than Sherman Lewis. Uh, so that is one news. And other than that, uh, well, dear fan subscribers, uh, I don't think there is anything to really dwell on. Uh, it's about time for me uh, to pull the curtain down on this uh, daily cricket show of mine today uh, by promising you, dear friends subscribers, that I'll be there to narrate the tale uh, on the second ODI between... Uh, the South Africa and Zimbabwe uh, at Blumfontein uh, and also any, any other cricket news that comes up. Uh, thanks for your company and thanks for watching cricket.